Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. Welcome back to the over-analysis of the wardrobe. And this is part two of three, so why don't we just go ahead and pick up where we left off. Ugh, damn spoiled brats. Hey boy, is everything okay? Tell me, that fall cut out your tongue? N no sir Isn't it too early to wear your costume? It's only afternoon. Um, what? So it turns out it's Halloween and we've got a good break because everyone's just gonna assume that Skinny's dressed up in a costume rather than being an actual skeleton boy. And speaking of good breaks, this rather stylishly dressed junkyard man is completely cool with us just hanging out in the dump and picking up anything that isn't nailed down. Yeah, like plutonium that's just hanging out in a bin. But hey, this game's not that unrealistic. After all, we have to wait until dark before venturing outside the dump. All clear. Wow! An American party! Excuse my xenophobia, but... This game's not taking place in America. Actually, where the hell are we? And why are American parties worthy of distinction? Questions that ultimately don't matter because, since we're here, let's get our drink on. I mean, it's not like the boy can drink, he's a skeleton, so I guess we can watch the beer pass through him like a college freshman. 28 days, 6 hours, 42 minutes, 12 seconds. Or we can just talk to Frank from down at Darko. Yeah, the references are getting pretty much on the nose here. Morpheus is in the background. We're talking to the thing from Darko. We got condom balloons in front of us. Yeah, things are going off the rail. But hey, at least after talking to Frank, he gives us an exciting new location to go to. And we'll go there eventually. But there's still plenty of business to be attended to in this little house party of infamous characters. Can you tell me what you keep saying? Nonsense I need to say to learn that crazy Donnie. He seems to love a good public rambling. Try using a mouse trap. You're not funny. Who said I'm trying to be? Well, I think Frank may have a point there. See you later, Playboy Bunny. See you later, Lindsay Lohan. Now, as I said in the first video, I think a lot of this game's humor is derived from just the rooms and the characters within it. I mean, look at this party. It's just awesome to look at. Now, we've already heard some of the humor. I mean, we called Frank from Donnie Darko a Playboy Bunny, and he called us Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, I want to talk about a couple of dated references, and furthermore, I mean, was that even funny? But hey, these rooms, damn, they impressive. And speaking of rooms, let's go upstairs and just savor the art direction. Cuddle me, hot stuff! Rawr! Can I come in? Go away! Ronald gets mad when I knock on the door while he's in the bath, too. I don't know why everyone got so crabby. You do that thing to me. Yeah, I mean, let's just stare at this dude for a very long time. Oh, that's some very smooth skin that looks like he cuts. But yeah, the whole point of this party is really just to absorb the beautiful absurdity of it all. Like, Jesus playing beer pong with Judas. Yes, that's a thing in this game. And the Ghostbusters are here. I mean, just come on, folks. But oh, well enough gawking at the scenery. After all, we're here to play a game, so let's just wander around and try to figure out what the hell we're supposed to be doing. Really, what the hell are we supposed to be doing? Check this out. We have guests. Let me welcome you to my little gloomy abode. For you, author of this video game, from now on you can count on my unconditional hate. Really, dude, it's that terrifying. But oh well, who knows what holy hell is supposed to be hidden in the shadows. Surely it's just not some little kid. Oh yeah, it's totally a little kid. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> You're having fun, eh? 
Tyler didn't want me in the way, so he closed me in here. I had to do something to fill all this time. Tyler? My older brother. He's the guy who arranged the party. I was bored. So, I thought it would be fun to scare anyone who walked into the storage room by mistake. If I was in your shoes, I would have done much worse. I'm Ben, Mr. Skinny. But anyway, as you can imagine, there's stuff to pick up here, but seriously, right now I'm just trying to figure out what the hell I'm supposed to be doing in this game. I guess get to our friend's house. Perhaps we need to take the wardrobe with us for reasons that are actually never explained. Is a wardrobe sacred? Is our soul tied to it? Are we just really and creepily attached to it? I don't know, and I don't think the game knows. But what I do know is, we're headed to a cemetery now. Seems fitting. We're a spooky skeleton after all. And like a broken record, I'm gonna compliment how awesome this room is and all the little cool references everywhere to games, TV shows, and just stuff in general. It goes without say, the art direction in this game is great, phenomenal, 10 out of 10, easily the highlight of the game. Although it's a shame that all this art direction is just a bit wasted on a game that doesn't seem to have any direction, cause I'm just here at the graveyard to, well, be here and hopefully stumble across- oh my goodness, we found grandma and a reference to Don't Starve in the background. Here lies Wilson Percival Higgisbury, exceptional scientist who fatally wounded himself with a razor blade. Here rests Woody the Lumberjack, asphyxiated after inhaling some silver powder. Here Willow the arsonist found her eternal peace, dead for the joy of a great fireworks show. Here Wilbur the Monkey King is buried, Dead on the spot, having slipped on a banana peel. What can I say? If you like that, you'll probably like this game well enough. And speaking of this game, we gotta give Grandma her haunted dentures back. I'm assuming they're non-corporeal because we're giving it to a ghost and she's gonna use it, and I can't think of any sensical way to make sense of it otherwise. Ronald, Grandma, sweetheart, you came to see me? You're so emaciated. Are you eating enough? Yeah, for some reason, she thinks that we're the friend that killed us instead of Skinny. It's a running gag, and also it just is kind of sad, isn't it? Because that's implying that this ghost is going to spend the rest of eternity a senile old lady. Good lord, that sounds like a ring of hell. But hey, at least she gives us a Bible at the end of our conversation, which, hey, we're probably going to need it for some puzzle. I don't know what puzzle. Actually, I do. It's for a puzzle at the very end of the game, but hey, we don't know that now, so we're like a Gideon. We just have a Bible. It's dangerous out there. It's full of atheists. Take this. And while we're here, I suppose it'd be a good idea to open up a secret passageway. After all, doesn't every graveyard have one? Automatic lighting system activated. Hey, it's pretty cool down here, and I think we gotta see the developers' heads in jars. How can you expect me to talk to some heads in brine? They must have uttered their last words a long time ago now. Too bad that doesn't apply to you, too. All this pointing and clicking stresses me out. I should absolutely take a vacation sooner or later. The developers seem to have a very hostile relationship with their own creation. Oh well, I guess there's no love lost between anybody here. I didn't know how to name him. Am I right? You didn't know how to name what? You. It's your name. No, I have no name. Maybe it's precisely because your parents didn't know how to name you. Hmm, perhaps. So I'm right. That's your name. I already told you it's not my name. He's just a cannibalistic zombie down here. I mean, doesn't every graveyard have one? And speaking of graveyards... There's a mysterious book of magical black magic down here that we're going to need to read through to learn some spells so that we can solve some puzzles later on in the game. I mean, who knew this secret tunnel would have so much stuff in it? Nevertheless, there's really not much for us to do down here. Sure, we can talk to a gay zombie, but frankly, he's campy and yeah, just really dull stereotypical stuff that frankly, I don't want to waste anyone's time with. But while we're on the subject of dull stereotypical stuff, let's go back to the party and talk to the jock who's out front because, you know, this is comedy, folks. What do you want? Why are you so angry? Upstairs is closed. 
And we can't do hanky panky with my blondie girlfriend upstairs. Given the circumstances, I'll volunteer myself as interpreter. The room on the upper floor is closed, so my girlfriend and I can't find a place where we can have a little alone time. The second upstairs is redundant. Skinny's a bit of an ass, isn't he? And yeah, this gag runs on for way too long for my taste. But again, I'm not you. You may find this hysterical. And oh yeah, here's the climax of the joke, folks. Brace yourself. It's coming to gold. Listen, since you can't go up there, why don't you give me a hand getting a wardrobe from the dump? Bite me. Tasty refusal. What if I find a way to clear the room? Why not? I suppose in this case I can accept. Okay, don't move and don't abuse that girl while I'm gone. I'm not drinking booze. Yeah, nice. No booze. Jesus, speak for yourself, game. Yeah, this game totally reminds me of a 90s game with all the problematic humor that's just like the fuck game. I mean, that wasn't funny. It's just weird that you referenced that to begin with. But hey, at least we can clear our palate by talking to Morpheus, right? Perhaps he'll provide a few laughs. I don't see you having much fun. Do you really want to know why? Yes, I would like that very much. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Come on, cut it out and tell me. I forgot my pill. Pill? My blue pill. Ah, boner pill jokes. And speaking of jokes, oh, well, at least I assume it's a joke. Let's go beat up the junkyard guy. After we give him a beer, of course. That would be only polite. Yes, good boy. Drink. Don't look at me that way. I had no other choice. Look at him. He's sleeping like an angel. A few hours of sleep won't be bad for him. He was too stressed. But hey, at least we got some keys from this guy now. To operate the crane so we can bring down the wardrobe. Yay, yes. Yeah, I bet you may have forgotten that's kind of what we're supposed to be doing. Well, the game doesn't really tell us we're supposed to do this. It's just kind of implied, so I guess I can give props to this game for not holding my hand. Although, it is very difficult to figure out what the hell is relevant in this game and what's just something to gawk at that's marginally grotesque. Like, oh, say this guy in a random cave we run across with a little demon just hanging out there. Who exactly are you? I'm Pat, the wicked conscience of this little miserable man. He kept me dormant inside him for years without listening to me. But you know, when you insist on suppressing every frustration, you're inevitably destined to blow up sooner or later. And so now, I am in charge. <laughs> Yeah, there's really much to do about nothing with this guy. What we're really here for is some random alien artifact and then a UFO we uncover. And of course, we won't tell the guy about it. Oh yeah, yeah, there's a UFO here just hanging out. It's really not that important though, at least as far as our quest is concerned. I, I really don't know what to say. It's a child's dream coming true. The cave painting idea might be set aside. What do you mean? Look for yourself to my right. I'll be darned. This will be worth a lot of money. Neolithic my foot. Yeah, the little demon was forcing this guy in socks and sandals, which is punishment enough to paint Neolithic paintings so that they could run some get-rich-quick scheme. Yeah, I mean... Let's not ask for the details. And speaking of details, on this very same beach, there's a gentleman with a stutter who's building a time machine. And this is the one instance I feel like the game really missed out on an opportunity for a reference. Why isn't his time machine a DeLorean? Yeah, he's building a time machine and we're going to help him fix it for, well, puzzle solving reasons, I assure you. You seem to be pretty eager. What are you waiting for? I ordered a new c carburetor online. The old one was d damaged during my previous attempt. And it still hasn't arrived yet. They'll get an earful from me at the c customer service of thatcrazyscience.com. 
You can really find everything on the internet these days. You c can't even imagine. P people are really out of their minds. I know this all may be very hard to follow, but I assure you, I tried my best to make this as sensical as possible, because I'm not joking around when I'm saying that this game feels like an early 90s game, because it does. It has that same sort of open world quality that a lot of early 90s games had, that kind of aimless game design where you just navigate the world and just kind of pick up stuff and try to figure out where everything goes, and you also have to rely a lot on little hints that characters say for some sense of direction. Yeah, this game's pretty damn rudderless, and I just found myself stumbling from one scenario to another and just trying to figure out where the hell the puzzles were, because they're not always so damn obvious. Like for instance, I have to pick up a piece of hair from the party to make a voodoo doll to get the dude out of the room who's having sex. So that requires me to know first voodoo, which we know because we read the black magic book and the secret underground tunnel, two, to get the hair, and three, to get a pen. But to do that, we have to beat a fishing game by magnetizing the alien artifact we found. I mean, that's a lot of damn steps to just get one little thing accomplished. I can't believe you did it. I am a real pro. What can you do? Why don't you take a look at your pockets? How on earth did you do it? When you spend your life escaping from the IRS, you can't survive without uh, certain tricks. And how did you end up running a carousel? Social services. Anyway, with that coupon, you can collect a prize of your choice at the gypsy kiosk just outside the city. Oh, I almost forgot. Be careful going around with that other little bag I gave you. Oh god, what other little bag? <laughs> I was just joking. You're not funny at all. Yeah, neither is this game. But as I said, we're on the quest to make a voodoo doll because we want to get the guy out of the sex room. So let's go see a gypsy. That's what the game calls him. I know some people don't like that word because, well, you're being a dick if you call people gypsies, apparently. But hey, on the plus side, we get a needle for our voodoo doll. And we also get to talk to, well, a puppet. Choose your favorite prize. Anything? Anything. Yeah, anything's a lie. We're gonna end up with one thing regardless of what we ask for. I'd like to have the legless amiibo of Princess Peach. Hmm. I gave out the last one just yesterday. But you're in luck. I can give you this. Let's have a look. How is it possible that all this stuff could fit inside such a small package? Well, okay, we got a metal head starter kit and a cassette tape. Now, there is a cassette tape player in the crane for some reason, so I guess we gotta to listen to the music, right? This is a cool track. I've never heard it. Too bad I don't know the title. Well, that's some Slayer right there, but yeah. Don't worry, I didn't forget about the voodoo doll, because after all, we got a hermit to knit it for us. Yeah, we went up into a treehouse, and there was a hermit there, and he was totally cool with knitting a voodoo doll. Oh well, at least we got it functional now, so let's go ahead and use this pentagram thing in the ground, because the junkyard guy apparently was into the dark arts, which is just really convenient for us. Nothing easier. All because of how easily I can project my complete hate of other people. Let's just hope this is the right time. Yay, we ruined Johnny something. Bravo? I think that's his name, Sex Life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But oh, we're not done yet ruining people's days, because we gotta go do something to the hermit that doesn't really make any sense. But I did it because I could do it, so I'm assuming there's a payoff down the road. Not bad. Now you really have an aggressive look. I have to admit it, I'm really pumped for it. Do you think you can sing a metal song now? Which one do you want to hear? I, I don't know the name of it, but do you know a song that goes like this? Mm-mm-mm-mm. Oh yes, I get it. I love that song. 
Are you ready? I feel like Brendan Samal would be proud of this game. But hey, while we're here, let's go ahead and talk to Frankenstein, quarterback Stein, no drinking Stein, and tell him the sex room is now vacant. What do you want? The bedroom on the upper floor is empty now, as promised. Really? I'm calling my gang now. Be still, her. Take the guys and go to the dump. Don't waste my time. I don't care what you do now. It's all fixed. Go now. Hanky Panky Room is ready. Wow, they couldn't control themselves any longer. And yeah, the quarterback's as good as his word. The guys move the wardrobe here with gusto. Moving this is proving to be much more difficult than I thought. Well, isn't that just fantastic? We got the wardrobe as far as the house party. But hey, on the plus side, at least now we can go back in time because the time machine's in operation. Yeah, for real, we're going back in time. And it's for a rather mundane reason at first. And yeah, this is the reason. I think I see something that glitters in the net. Serves me right. Next time I'd better mind my own business. Yeah, it may sound pointless that, but I assure you there was a reason for doing it. Cause now we can go back to the campy zombie, and well he'll do this. Oh god, what's that terrible smell? You must absolutely take a bath. Grab this. And yeah, we're gonna give bubble bath to this guy and something amazing is gonna happen, but you're gonna have to find out in the next part of the over-analysis of the wardrobe. And yeah, I think I lied. It's gonna take me a little bit longer than two parts to flesh out this game. Because, well, I wanna do it justice. Cause it's, well, I don't know, something different. Yeah, I know, that sounds like a great review. Yeah, it's something different. I mean, I don't mind it. It's not the greatest game ever, but hey, it may be worth your time if you like older adventure games. Okay, folks, uh, hopefully we'll see you next time. Have a good day.